Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be doing Untitled. We're going to talk about the Research Bureau, the rename of the Naval Training Center. Also wanted to talk about the Symbols of France grind and how unfortunate it is for those of us who don't have every ship in the game. And then finally, I wanted to talk about the Thunderer. Why don't I have a first impression video out on the Thunderer yet? And spoiler alert, it's because the ship sucks. It's very hard to get a game that's actually worth sharing when the ship is so terrible. So, let's talk about Research Bureau. You're looking at the first reward for Research Bureau. It's going to be like 40 or 50,000 research points. It's the Colbert. It's a tier 10 Atlanta style French cruiser. Obviously, it rains fire from heaven. And uh, it looks like, you know, bees blocking out the sun from like 300 or something like that. So it's ridiculous, clearly. I'm not defending the ship at all. I want to talk about the Research Bureau. So the Research Bureau is a rename of the Naval Training Center. Obviously, PR has something to do with that, but Naval Training Center was not appropriate to what was being offered now. Naval Training Center was appropriate when literal power was being available. You know, turning a tier 10 ship into a tier 13 ship. Yeah, that would be great for the game, wouldn't it? It'd be so, so balanced for clan and ranked. Ugh, that'd be great. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be. So, Research Bureau is the new name, and the Research Bureau is the following. If you have at least two tier 10 researchable ships in your port, so a Des Moines, a Geary, a Montana, a Midway, and, you know, a Yamato, you are eligible to reset a line. You cannot reset if the only two tier 10s you have is a Stalingrad and a Bagong, because those aren't researchable ships. But once you fulfill that minimum two requirement, so this does exclude new players, unfortunately, once you fulfill those initial requirements, you can completely turn in all of the ship modules, the ships themselves, and restart the line from the very beginning. And it starts from the very beginning, wherever that line happens to start. And you have to go all the way up to tier 10. And the rewards do not start until you hit tier 6. It's 500 research points for tier 6 and tier 7, 1500 for tier 8 and tier 9, and then 6,000 for tier 10, with a grand total of 10,000 researchable points earned each time you regrind a line. Now, I've been told that the aircraft carrier will be eligible, but it doesn't have a tier 9, and it doesn't have a tier 7, so does that mean you never get a tier 7 and a tier 9 worth of value? Yeah, that's probably what it means. Also, Wargaming decided to do a very weird choice. Wargaming is going to punish players who were early access recipients. If you were, and this is an example, if you were one of the few who got lucky and earned the Vladivostok from a, an early access container, if you were to reset the Soviet battleship line, of course, earning the Kremlin, if you were to reset all of that, you wouldn't get any research points for unlocking the tier 6 or the tier 7 because you didn't initially research that in the first place. But you could get it for the 8, 9, and 10. Now you have to consider this and remember this. I'm sure Wargaming will just be perfectly clear on exactly what the total rewards are going to be. There won't be any confusion whatsoever, you know. Wargaming has never released something into any of their games with very little explanation, right? Of course they have, so that's exactly what I expect. Very little explanation, clarity. You're going to have to possibly remember which ships you actually unlocked and which ones you earned through early access. That would really suck. Also. I'm not 100% that it's going to be, you know, are you really, really certain that you would like to regrind this line? You're giving up all of this and list in order, you know, exactly what's being sold. Your commanders are sent to reserve. I believe the modules that you equip on the ship are also sent to your inventory. But the ship modules, you know, like the upgrade torpedo, the upgrade gun range, those are sold. So is the ship itself. And you have to do it all over again. The Research Bureau is going to be divided into three-month seasons. And so there's going to be a cap on the total amount that you can regrind each month. This is sort of to prevent people from just buying themselves through this. I mean, I think I have like 100 million XP that I could turn into free XP. I could research, you know, the line four or five times, spend 52, 100 or 200 bucks, 
and get the Colbert instantly if I wanted to. And that's the whole point of the system, is they want you to dump all your free XP, they want you to spend all of your camos and your signal flags regrinding up the line. They want to be able to get rid of all this stuff and reward you minimally. And I do mean minimally. The only announced reward that will be available when it is released in 8.7 is the Colbert. The Ohio should be a reward eventually after it. Don't know when. 8.8, 8.9. They haven't mentioned much of the in the way of the camouflage or unique flags. Nothing like that. And yet, that is perfect content for this. Why can't we take all of the research points that we earn and spend it on stuff that maybe had a one-off deal? You know, maybe it was released only for one month and in, in, in 2017. And in that one month in 2017, you were on vacation, you were sick, and you couldn't participate, and you really wanted that flag or that unique camo or whatever. You could unlock it through the system. Halloween camo, all that stuff. Why can't that be eligible content for people to unlock with research? You are sort of encouraging people to be able to use your free XP, AKA spend doubloons to get free XP so you can contribute to this. So you're getting your money one way or the other. Please offer this as a way for new players and veteran players to obtain things that are no longer obtainable at this point. And I can see people being, oh, that's bull crap. You know, they missed out. Yeah, sure they did. What's wrong with them having access to cosmetics, signal flags? You know, what what is wrong with the flags themselves or the unique flags themselves? You know, like uh, Jolly Roger, I've heard people, oh, well, you earn that for, you know, playing rank one in season one. That's, that's sort of the reward. Okay, good. Why can't it be a reward now? You know? I'm someone who doesn't like exclusivity when it comes to that. Uh, just because I was actually playing at the time doesn't mean that I was so much better. This should be a system that brings everyone into it. Everyone may or may not see something that they like. You know, ships, unique premium camo, stuff that's long since been in the game and is no longer available. Like, um, I guess the hood camo, the uh, damage camo for that. Or even unique camo on its own. Wouldn't it be cool if this was a way for players to also have a free, to potentially, free way of unlocking some of this stuff? Or, you know, just buy it for doubloons. So I just really hope that Wargaming puts a little bit more effort into this and makes it something for everyone. Not just something for people who need to have tier 10 ships so that they can fill out their clan or rank, you know, teams and make these ships so godlike or so so good that they're basically necessary for every clan to have every potential strat counter. I, I just, I feel really uncomfortable with the Colbert and the Ohio's current power level. And I, I also feel uncomfortable because I think that's what Wargaming wants. I think Wargaming wants you to feel like you kind of need these ships. I would prefer if Wargaming would leverage something else where it's not so universal. You know, I'm not looking for the Bismarck underwater camo. I already have it. But I'm sure there's a couple Bismarck players that would love to have that and they can't access it. And then collectively, if you open up the inventory, there's a hundreds of things that are no longer available to the user. And wouldn't it be cool if it was available there? It would just fill out the research bureau so that there's... Plenty of content for everyone always. And all this new stuff, eventually it'll roll into the research bureau. Just just make those changes and I think everyone would love it. But if you keep it emphasizing ships and potential power change, it's never going to be liked because it's always going to feel like a chore. And it doesn't need to feel like a chore. There's plenty of people that will take on an activity for no other reason than they want to do it. And that's really what Research Bureau should be, in my opinion. Tell me what you think of the Research Bureau and the name change and all that stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious what you think on the proposed announcements. Uh, the video description is going to have the link to exactly all the juicy B details. But what I basically shared with you pretty much sums it up. So let's talk about the Symbols of France grind. It leverages the snowflake that happened during the winter. Snowflake during the winter. You could get coal or steel, depending on the tier. 
But now it's coal or Republic tokens. And those Republic tokens are great. That would be wonderful for new players because they offer bundles that give you credits, signal flags, um, doubloons. You know, these are resources that are very scarce and very necessary for a new player. But guess what? You can't earn it. Unless, of course, you spend real money. Most players who are new to the game can only ever earn coal. And they don't have a lot of ships when they're new to the game. You know, they don't, they're don't. they not encouraged to keep them in their inventory. They have to spend money just to buy a port slot to keep the ship. So clearly there's not going to be a lot of ships in the inventory. I, I just... I love a lot of what Wargaming does, but it just feels like Wargaming knows exactly how far they can push things so that they can min-max their income. When what they should really be doing is min-maxing the positive feeling that their customers have towards their product so that they keep coming back and supporting it no matter what. That's really what I hope. And I'm just not seeing it with Symbols of France and other stuff. It, it doesn't encourage the right type of collecting. And this honestly is the second time we've ever seen this. Other than this and the Snowflake event, there's really no reason to keep every ship in the game. So when you implement something like this for an event, just to try it out, I think you should really double check that most of your consumers can take full advantage because I just don't feel like something like this should be exclusive to 5 or 10% of your community who has enough eligible ships to unlock not only the premium camo for the tier 5, 6, 7, and 8 French DDs, but also those bundles. Those bundles are perfect. They are perfect for new players, and they are the ones who will have no chance of unlocking them. And that saddens me. I don't think that that's how it should go. We should be growing the population, not shrinking it. And every time you filter it out to be more rewarding for veterans than new players, you're shrinking the population. A veteran needs, you know, one or two things to leave. A new player has nothing. There's no loyalty whatsoever. You should be walking over yourself to reward them, tripping over yourself to reward them because they need it. They're new players. So yeah, the symbols of France, just a huge fail. I would have liked it if it was just, you know, every tier could reward Republic tokens so that you could have access to it. It feels really weird to earn coal and not in any meaningful way. Most people have early tier ships. So I think if you do this again, Wargaming, keep it the same currency, no matter the tier, and just enjoy the fact that people are playing different tiers so they can fulfill this. Don't try and filter it out so that, you know, special type of players are the only ones that get real rewards. Make sure everyone has the same opportunities at the same rewards. And that's all I'll say. I'm not really feeling the symbols of France. I do like having to play ships that I don't normally play. I like that. But I don't like how, you know, only people who are filthy rich and own every ship really benefit from this. So, I get that you want to reward them, but you can't reward them in such an exclusive way for an event that seemingly is for everyone. Anyone who takes part in the French DD event should be rewarded, and they're not. And I don't like that. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is the Thunderer. This is probably the worst test ship I have played in recent memory. It's a tier 10 ship. It honestly doesn't deserve to be a tier 10. It should be like a tier 9 or a tier 8. It has 457 guns, and I love what I Chase did. He had like a 50 second video where he basically equipped the 457 guns to the Conqueror and said, here you go. This is a better version of the Thunder. <laughs> it's a piece of garbage. And it's really hard to get a good game with a piece of garbage. And I'm trying, guys. I'm really trying. It's just I'm not feeling the eight 457s that are incredibly inaccurate when compared to the Ohio. The Ohio is absolutely too powerful. But the Thunder is too weak. These two ships need to sort of converge on their power so that both have their, you know, legitimate play situation where they excel and obviously are underpowered and I just don't feel that the Ohio is just so much better in literally every way so please address the fact that the Thunder is so terrible I really don't like how bad it is and I'm really trying guys I'm trying to get a first impression on the Thunder it's just oh it's such a chore it's such a chore it's so bad 
But hopefully you guys enjoyed the discussion on the Research Bureau, Symbols of France, and the Thunderer. Leave in the comments your thoughts. I am very interested to read them. And uh, yeah, Colbert, spam's a lot of fire. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.